case, let us get into the uh, next uh, problem in the EC paper. That's from analog electronics. So what's given us a PN junction diode. Uh, Sometimes this problems okay in falling in the boundary of both uh, electronic devices and analog electronics. Okay, but with the fundamentals of analog electronics still okay you can connect. Okay, so I'll take it analog electronics problem. Okay, but still okay they're going to play with the basic terminal characteristics of a PN junction diode. Okay. So let me consider the analog electronic circuit symbol of the diode. Okay, shortly representing anode and cathode terminals of the PN junction diode. If it is a device physics representation, one can happily represent this as a box that is also a box only having a P terminal and then N terminal, but still you prefer to say this is the anode terminal and cathode terminal. This is the device physics representation. This is your analog electronics representation. And what is the terminal characteristics? So that's a current anode to cathode current of the diode when it is forward biased okay that is anode positive cathode negative under the forward bias or in general the terminal characteristics of a pn junction diode supplied by the device modeling engineer is this what is that id is equal to is into e to the power of diode voltage it may be forward voltage or reverse voltage forward bias or reverse bias voltage divided by Eta Vt minus 1 is the complete terminal characteristics. I didn't discard anything. I have taken everything into account. Okay. So what is given for us is only IS is given. That's a reverse saturation current of the PN junction diode. That's given as 10 power minus 12. Usually it is in the order of 10 power minus 15, but in this case it is given as 10 power minus 12. Anyway, it's not a default value. We should not take it. Okay. Default. But there are default values in this. Eta not mentioned means we should take eta equal to 1. Vt not mentioned means we should take Vt equal to 25 millivolt at the ambient temperature 17 degrees C only. So no temperature is mentioned. So we can go with this default values. Take eta 1 thermal voltage of the uh, PN junction diode as 25 millivolt. So therefore the ID expression is going to be now 10 power minus 12. Okay, that is your IS. Let me go with IS. So it is IS into e to the power of and he said he wants a current in the order of what milliamps okay so milliamps means it's going to be under strong forward bias under strong forward bias means the e power term is going to be very huge comparing to the one so one can happily discard this one so under strong forward bias id can be perceived as is into e power vd by eta vt let us play with this because it's a strong forward bias is said indirectly. So we can, because it's saturation current is 10 power minus 12 and the current going through the diode is the forward bias current going through the diode is what? 1 milliamp. So this current is mentioned as 1 milliamp. So diode current has to be 1 milliamps means how much voltage, okay, you need for the diode uh, to excite, okay? So how much voltage you need to excite the diode so that the current through the diode is going to be 1 milliamps, okay? That's a problem. Let me have an empty slide. So what we have is a diode. Having two terminals. So we are looking for the excitation, that's a voltage. Okay, you can feel like this, that's a voltage, forward bias voltage. So call the state away as a voltage VD. Okay, this is resulting in a current of one milliamps and diode specs are given. It has uh, 10 power minus 12 amps as IS, eta equal to one, it's IS, eta equal to one, VT equal to 25 millivolts. with that, you need the value of VD to set the forward bias current to 1 milliamps. Therefore, straight away can play with the equation ID equal to 
is into a power v d by v t because eta equal to one. Approximation is done. Okay, under strong forward bias. So then I can say i d by i s is equal to a power v d by v t. So problem is only to find out v d. Yes, i d by i s is going to be a huge number. Okay, so the problem is. Like in the examination, there is no calculator, manual calculator. There is no online calculator also provided. You have to manipulate this number VD. That is a challenge. Okay, so what is ID now? One milliamp. So what is ID by IS? So it's ten power minus three divided by ten power minus twelve. That's the ratio between the two currents. And then yes, that confirms A power VD by VT is very large. That confirms A power VD by eta VT is so large. So the approximation is valid. Okay, it's proved here itself. So a power v d by v t we are getting. Okay, so he is asking v d only. Now let us apply ln on both side. What is the number? Ten power minus three by ten power minus twelve. That's going to be ten uh, power nine. So it's not ln of ten power nine. That is equal to a. Uh, that is uh, v d by v t you will get. So therefore, from this we can conclude the diode voltages, the thermal voltage into ln of ten power nine. This manipulation we have to perform. There is no other choice. It's twenty-five millivolt into ln of ten power nine. Yes, how to calculate this? That's exactly the voltage across a diode needed to produce a forward bias current of one milliamps. Yes, how to proceed? So we should know what is ln of ten power nine. What is ln of ten power nine? How to go ahead for this? Ln of ten power nine. Nobody will help us in the examination. So what is ln of ten power nine? It's log e base ten power nine. And tell me what is ln of x? Ln of s x is equal to, for example, we can say two point three zero three into log base ten of x. Okay, this property if we exploit, okay. Uh, There is a helping mechanism. Yes, two point three zero three into yes. So what do we have? Ln of x. What is that? Ln of ten power nine. So I can replace ln of ten power nine by this. Okay, that's a connection between ln and log base ten. Okay, so now I can say V D equal to yes. That's how we need to help. Okay, that's where we get stuck in this problem, and no other intuitive way. Okay, so to get uh, predictive V D. Okay, that's a way. Twenty five millivolt into two point three zero three. Or shortly can take two point three also. That's fine. Into log base ten of that x. That's ten power nine. It's easy now. You'll play. So what is this? Yes, that is going to give the result. From this, what is the result? Yes, we can go for the result approximately. Then we'll see the options. Then we'll freeze. Okay. So V D can be calculated as what is the number twenty five into ten power minus three into Two point three zero three into nine, you will get so nine into two point three zero three will be the number. So what we need now is nine into twenty five. Better you do okay. Nine into twenty five is better. So V D is equal to nine into twenty five is two twenty five. Two twenty five into two point three. So two twenty five into two point three millivolt will be roughly the V D. Yes, roughly we'll conclude. If you want a fair result, we'll go for that manipulation. Two twenty-five. So n to two is nothing but four fifty milliolt, and then point three times that of this means it's going to be two to five into point three is going to be so five is going to be five into three fifteen. There is no other choice, no excuse. We have to do it. Okay, five threes are fifteen, and two three. So it's going to become seven. Two three is going to be. Six. So then put the point here, sixty-seven point five. So four fifty plus sixty-seven point five. Thirty percent of two twenty-five. Okay, thirty percent of two twenty-five. That is thirty percent of two twenty-five. Let me have a small doubt. So that's thirty uh, by hundred. That's your point three into two twenty-five. It's also better. So you'll get two point two twenty-five means you'll get two point two five into thirty. Hopefully that is this number. Okay. Yes, sixty. Okay, so then thirteen to point two five. Okay, hope it seems okay. Then the net result is going to be four fifty plus sixty seven point five will become five hundred and seventeen point five milli old is the expected number. 
around this okay but see whether the options are matching yes 0.539 is closer okay probably that is your choice okay okay so because of we are discarding that 03 okay so that is multiplied by 225 that 03 may contribute something so i'll pick the answer as option d 0.539 is enough to produce a current of 1 milliamps okay and one important helping hand your itself playing with this identity ln of x as a function of your log base 10x okay so with that i'm connecting okay so you may have some other technique but that's how the problem you have to approach the problem so concept is simple but how you manipulate this data okay you need such a computation technique that's where we will be lagging at this okay yes that's a way to answer the problem it's one mark you feel like it's worth of two marks okay yes that's an interesting one from analog electronics playing with a simple pn junction diode finding its voltage for the given for bias current yes this one another interesting problem okay so in a bjt so it is given as a common emitter forward current okay amplification factor determine okay common emitter common emitter means who is a common emitter is a common okay so let me draw the bjt so let me take the small signal representation emitter is common so emitter is common means in common emitter configuration, so output will be taken at the collector, input is given at the base. So base is going to serve as the input, collector is going to serve as output, emitter is the common. That's your configuration known as common emitter. That's an AZ analysis, remember that, where you have that small RG as well, okay, for the small signal model and this potential difference will be zero. And now he's talking about the current amplification factor means, so let this is the input current, and let this is the output current so that's ic so that means he's talking about ic by ib ic by ib is nothing but the factor beta okay that's a current amplification factor so that's a beta you feel like input is current output is also current so that's output current is a collector current input current is a base current so in ac analysis we use always small letters to represent the corresponding current so he's talking about current amplification factor means beta only so the point is this what we have is so devices acting as an amplifier means it is strictly in active state of operation in active state of operation so if you have a connection between the two it's ic and this is ib means so it is going to be something like this okay so that means ic is equal to ic equal to what beta times your ib so then under the ac analysis what is given for us we have a set of data ic1 given ic2 given for the corresponding ib1 and ib2 okay you should take this way he's not giving that clarity so is the statement goes like this determine the common emitter forward current amplification factor when ic1 is this ic2 is this ib1 is this ib2 is this means okay so you have to understand yourself what is that <clears throat> you should feel like so there is ib1 given and for that we have a response ic1 you should feel like this otherwise there is no problem in this then you have a current ib2 that is responding with the current of what ic2 now you understand the problem so ic2 higher than ic1 ib2 higher than ib1 means then straight away can go for the beta as what change in ic small change in ic due to small change in ib that's your current gain factor okay so don't do ic1 by ib1 and ic2 by ib2 better you go with the change in ic due to the change in ib so it's a small signal amplification factor that's a small signal factor small change in ic due to small change in ib feel that way so that's your gain so what is change in ic 4.2 so that is, that is nothing but ic2 minus ic1 and it's going to become ib2 minus ib1 okay so this is the way if only one data is given i can straight away go with ic by ib and since two data given i'll go with this change okay so this is the portion that the slope is talking about. That slope is nothing but our beta, okay? I see it's nothing but beta times IV, okay? So yes, what is that beta? It's easy now. The change in current is 1 milliamps in the collector as a result of how much change in current? 10 microamps base current. So the result is 1 milliamps. I can put it as 1000 
microamps, then divided by 10 microamps. Nothing to manipulate. Micro micro will get cancelled. One zero will get cancelled. The result is 100. So I'll conclude beta as 100. Okay, with the fundamentals of transistors. Okay, yes. So the option is yes, you can freeze option. The best option is C. Okay, that's your answer. That's another easy problem from analog electronics. The first one from uh, the terminal characteristics of the diode. Second one, okay, the basic of a BJT, okay, acting as a common emitter amplifier. Okay, so playing for the current amplification factor beta. It didn't say beta. Yes, that's what it means. Okay, so there are two factors in a BJT. One is alpha, another one is beta. So we should know what parameter is talking about. Then you have to connect accordingly. Okay. Yes, with this, let me conclude this video. So we'll meet in one more video. Hope you enjoyed. And you can post your suggestions as well, if any. So thank you. Thank you for watching.